when you open chat GPT or open AI, it will probably open in 3.5. You could go ahead and try 3.5 if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and change this to chat GPT 4. Let's start at the top of our prompt examples and see what chat BT, GPT 4 gives us. So this is the beginning of, um, it's just a simple Google-like search, right? What are release notes? All right, it's giving us some text. Provided alongside new software, list changes. They can include, it has a list of things that it might include. Release notes are a key part of software documentation. Yes, they are. Good release notes are clear. Okay, so... We can, at this point, start a new chat, which we would do by going up here and clicking this button, or we can continue the conversation. So that's what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to copy our next prompt. What are the components of information included in a release note? We'll give it that question. All right, release notes typically include the following components. All right, they've got a header with a product name, version number, date. Got an intro, a brief section that provides context, like maybe what the focus of the release is or its significance. Got a list of new features that were added to the software list of enhancements, so how they've made what was already there better, a list of bug fixes, so things that weren't working that they fixed. Okay, this is, you can see how this could be incredibly helpful to a new tech writer at a software company who's never written a release note before. We've got 11 components, nope, 12. So acknowledgments, and what else is left? 13 components. Not 14. Down to legal notices. They vary based on the software, the company's practices, users' needs. It's common for release notes to be accompanied by links to more detailed resources, such as the full documentation. Right. Okay. Cool. Now what I want to do is sweep this start a new chat, and I'm going to do the same question over again. What are the components? Let's see what we get. If you're following along with me while you actually do the prompting yourself, you're already seeing different results. Okay, this time there's nothing about a header. It starts with, it's got an intro, it's got to include the release date and new features. Enhancements. Okay, this is very similar, uh, but it note it's not exactly the same. This is why oftentimes uh, it's a mistake to enter a prompt and simply accept that first response or output. This is very, it's similar, but it's definitely not exactly the same. I don't remember seeing anything about installation instructions before. Uh, it didn't list references. Well, we can tell it's not exactly the same list because it's got 13 components this time instead of 14. These components serve to keep users informed about what's changed, what issues. Okay, similar, but not identical. Now we're going to sweep this one. We're going to try prompt number four, which is about specifying the roles or personas of the, the, of you and of chat, what you're asking, what role you're asking the Gen AI to uh, take on. So you're a senior tech writer who's training a junior tech writer at a software company, explain release notes, the components of information that are included and the method the company uses 
to deliver these to users. Let's see what we get. Chat GPT-4 is usually slower than Chat GPT-3.5 because there are more people using it. All right, they're provided alongside a software update to communicate what's changed or been improved in the new version of the software. And they usually include several key components. So it's going to give us our list again, an introduction overview, new features enhancements, uh, bug fixes, known issues. This looks very similar to what it's given us in the past deprecated features, so in other words, things that have been deleted, no longer supported. Note that what, I don't remember if it did this before, but note that now it's, it's including these statements for each, um, for each component, or at least some of them that explains why users want that information. Uh, acknowledgements, uh, let's see, um, Compatibility, acknowledgments, instructions, okay, contact info, legal notices. Regarding the method of delivery, com companies commonly use several channels in app notifications. So if you're um, in an application on your phone or on the web, when you log in, it's possible that there's a pop up or a, a summary of release notes. And then you can opt to read more. Sometimes these are emailed, part of a newsletter, targeted email to users who've opted in to receive updates. Be listed on the company website. Could be a blog format, support section, or a specific page for product updates. Uh, some companies use update managers that not only notify the user of an available update, but also provide the release notes within the update interface. Okay. Social media forums, RSS feeds. Okay. Companies should aim for clarity, concision. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what we'll get with my option number five here for a prompt. Sometimes, um, sometimes chat GPT-4 does not give you the most readable answer. This one's pretty good already, so I don't know what it's going to do if I tell it to, to make it more scannable. If it had given me, you know, two paragraphs worth of information, this might not have been, uh, this would have been a very different, okay, now it's giving me an outline. Here's a reformatted explanation. Now the whole thing's in bullets. That's not necessarily great. It, it can reformat to some extent, um, the kind of output you want to see. And, if you remember correctly, one of the things that I asked it to do was not just to make it more scannable, but to add an effective example of a release note. So let's see what it gives. Prompt number six, the type is called a reflect on reflection. And so when, when the system gives you a, some output or an example of something, you can ask it to evaluate the effectiveness of the example. So let's do that and see what it says. A set of criteria. Ah, okay. Now this, this does come up sometimes. It will give you more than one response and your job is to choose which one you like better. So Describe the evaluation criteria. Yeah, I've asked it, which response do I prefer? So look, one says the following criteria, clarity, completeness, accuracy, relevance, organization, scannability, accessibility, brevity. 
The criteria used for this one are derived from best practices in technical communication and content strategy as recommended by the Society for Technical Communication and my understanding of what constitutes effective technical content. Ooh, excellent. All right, these, all right, let's, let's look at number two. To evaluate the effectiveness, I'll employ a set of criteria that are widely accepted in the field of technical communication. These criteria are informed by best practices from, and they notice they mention STC, but they add some other things like plain language guidelines, principles from recognized style guides like the Microsoft, uh, well, they call it the Manual of Style, um, but in fact, it's the Microsoft Writing Style Guide now. And read me first a style guide for the computer industry. So this time it would evaluate clarity, conciseness, organization, accessibility, relevance, completeness, actionability, accuracy. Okay, I, I think I like the second one better. So there we go. So I've chosen the second one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to uh, rewrite, use these criteria to rewrite the example. And I'm also going to use another technique that's called a reminder. So sometimes um, these Gen AI, AI systems go off the rails and kind of forget where you started out. And so I'm going to uh, remind it that you're a senior tech writer at a software company. All right, so we'll add that in here. All right, so now it's going to revise what it gave me above by saying, by using the criteria it just listed. And I think I would have to actually... Um, compare them side by side, but that'd be silly, wouldn't it? Why would I compare them side by side when I can just ask it, what changes did you make? So that's what I'm going to do in just a second. Sections are clearly marked. The information within them is laid out in bullet points. The release notes give a precise overview of what users can expect. So I could ask it, what did you change? But for our purposes right now, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to sweep this and we're going to start over with something different. So when you look down here to um, the type of prompt or technique number eight, it's called a single shot prompt. I'll explain why it's a single shot in just a minute. So what I'm going to do is I have a different kind of question about release notes here. I'm going to say... The uploaded file, so I do have to upload a file, contains an effective release note. Rewrite your example to be more effective by following this model. All right, so let's find my release note here. So I can just drag it down in here, examples. No, I want the single one. Wait just a second to upload, and then... We'll see what it has to say. Uh, it knows my name. We'll talk about how you customize it in just a minute. Here's a revised version modeled after the example provided. Uh, it didn't do exactly what I wanted. It's rewriting the example that's in my file, but it's not using it uh, as a model. Okay, so. So I need to tell, oh, I swept that whole thing, didn't I? Yes, I did. So let's see if we can find, so you'll notice over here in the left, there'll be a list of um, the conversations that you've had, the sessions that you've had. Let's see. Uh, 
here's a revised example. All right, I'm just going to cut and paste this. Now we go back to this one. Um, now, this is something we haven't talked about yet. Uh, maybe I should call it a note. In fact, I'm going to say it. Your release note. And then I copy it in here, and at the end, I'll use brackets. Your release note. All right, so I've got there the copy that was created by um, by the Gen AI. Now what I want to do is go back and use my single shot. All right, so... Oh, I do have to put my file back in here again. All right, so now this prompt says, the uploaded file contains an effective release note. This is one I've already created, and we just uploaded this file. Rewrite your example below. We could call it your release. We'll use terms consistently example below to be more effective. Now, it's not going to do what I'm asking it to do. It's rewriting. So when you know you're getting stuff you don't want, you can stop it. Um, you can always provide feedback. So bad response, why? didn't fully follow instructions. You don't have to give the feedback, but it helps improve the function of the Gen AI, Gen AI tool overall. So that's not a bad thing to do. All right, let's, let's try something different. Um, the difference between a single shot prompt and a few shot prompt is that you give the AI more examples of the kind of response you want it to give you. Uh, well, let's change this a little bit. I'm going to change this to... Uh, all right, bear with me for a second. In the uploaded file, examples A and B represent effective re release notes. C and D are ineffective. Create instructions for writing an effective release note by following the model underlying these four examples. All right, now I've got to give it my file, which is this one. So I've got four examples in this attached file. Two are good, two are not good. And I'm asking the Gen AI tool to give me a set of, uh, maybe create instructions. Guidance for a junior technical writer for writing an effective release note. Okay, let's see what it gives us. As a junior writer, it's important to communicate updates clearly and professionally. Here's guidance based on effective examples. Clarity and precision to state the version and release date at the beginning. Use clear headings and bullet points. Be concise, include essential information without excessive detail, avoid technical jargon. All right, also wants you to use structured content or to use to structure your content in an effective note. Briefly describe new features, mention enhancements. Okay, so I was talking about the same list of uh, information components that are supposed to go in. Now notice, this is interesting, professional tone. So this is especially interesting to us in this class. Maintain a professional and neutral tone. 
avoid casual language, slang, or humor. Write in an active voice to engage the reader. Ooh, I really, so this is not on my sheet, but I really want to uh, ask the AI to expand on this. Please expand your guidance for professional tone in release notes by adding one effective and one ineffective example from, uh, do I, yeah, from the uploaded file. Let's see if that works. Oh, and so it's going to do this a little differently than I, than I thought, but that's okay. So it's going to tell us about what, what was good in professional, uh, tone. For example, B was the language was clear and formal without being overly technical. Uh, use passive voice minimally, opting instead for active voice that directly engages the reader. The tone's informative and restrained. Then for the ineffective example of professional tone in example C, it uses overly cal casual language and colloquialisms. This is what I wanted. I wanted quotes, but I didn't tell chat GPT that that's what I wanted. And so what I could do at this point is repeat my prompt from above, um, adding one effective example and quotes from the uploaded file. All right, you get the idea. Um, one of the, uh, one of the more effective, um, ways we're going to start over again here. One of the more effective ways of prompting chat GPT for us is use something that I've listed in the table here as example 10, chain of thought. Let's copy this. I'll read it for you. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to tell me the reasoning behind their, his an, its, its answer. I'm going to ask ChatGPT4 to give me an answer, but to show its work. I'm asking, should I recommend adopting DITA for the work of my tech pubs group in a company that manufactures aircraft maintenance tools? Report one step of reasoning as a, at a time as you determine your answer. Let's think step by step so that let's think step by step. Many people say that's an, uh, a required component that you need to add to your prompt if you want uh, the Gen AI to do what you're asking. So let's see what we get. All right, here we go. To provide a well-reasoned recommendation need to consider several factors. Okay, step one, evaluate the current documentation needs. Uh, okay, I'm already not happy. I want it to go through one, one at a time. So let me, um, let me see here. Um, Okay, understood. Let's proceed. Okay, here we go. Maybe. Okay, identify the specific content requirements of the group. That makes sense. Your group. This includes understanding the nature of the audience type of content. This step is crucial. Indicate when you're ready for the next step of reasoning step is crucial. It benefits complex. Okay, let's say I believe uh, our our content. How about that? Our content makes up a complex 
documentation system. Assess the complexity and reuse potential. Okay, aircraft maintenance tools likely involve detailed specs, regulatory compliance, step-by-step -step procedure, da 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 Okay, in this step, we would analyze existing documentation to see how certain pieces of information are repeated. If there's significant overlap, or if they're regularly updated due to changes, the goal is to determine if adopting DITA could result in more consistent... Okay, um... Uh, let's say we've done a content audit. And we know there is significant overlap in content across products. All right. Okay, so it just goes on. Evaluate the potential for standardization and scalability. Okay. With the knowledge there is significant overlap, that is designed to support high level of standardization. Implementation of DITA would likely standardize the structure of your documents. Okay. It facilitates better content management and ensures that documentation meets industry standards and regulatory requirements. Considering your content audit revealed a significant overlap, the use of DITA's content referencing single sourcing capabilities would mean updates made in one place automatically propagate to all relevant. Okay. What's next? Okay. Carefully analyze infrastructure resource allocation. All right, so this all is going to list do the current authoring tools and CMSs, are they compatible with DITA or do you have to get a new tool? Is there a need for a CCMS? Determine training needs, cost. Vendor support. So, okay, so what, what Jet GPT is telling me now is if I answer these questions and it shows that our group has the capability to absorb the investment and long-term benefits outweigh costs, Right, so I need to be able to answer these questions and then it says the next step would be to develop an implementation plan. All right, so um, it wasn't a perfect answer, but it definitely helped me think through again by um, by giving me its chain of thought about solving a problem. You'll see in just a second that this is similar to the next type of prompt I'm going to talk about. All right, one interesting way in which you might use a system like this is to help you learn new things. The prompt for 11 describes a situation where you're applying for a job, but you don't know quite what to put into uh, an example in your portfolio. So you ask ChatGPT. Note the prompt says, ask me questions about structured authoring when creating product documentation in order to understand my knowledge level. Once you have enough information, write a draft. Start with some foundational questions. How would you define structured authoring? What are its key components? Can you explain the role of DITA? So it's not doing exactly what I asked. I wanted to ask me a single question, one at a time. All right, I'll put that at the end. All right, so one, what will I say? How would you define structured authoring? Um, OK, 
Can you explain the role of Ditta? Next question. What's your experience with component content? Man okay. So you get the idea here. What's going to happen is I'm going to let chat GPT be my instructor, um, by asking what I know and then by evaluating what I know. And if I, if I didn't understand something, I could, um, I could ask it to give me a better understanding and continue this whole, this, this can be a very effective way to learn, um, about something new. All right. So let's try, um, custom instructions. So I'm going to, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over here to wherever your name appears. And if we click here, you'll see there are several pop-ups. Um, this has to do with your plan or your pricing. You can create your own uh, GPTs, which is part of what you see up here. I've been playing with this. You can customize, and that's exactly what we want to do. So let's click customize. You can see I already have custom instructions, but when you open this, it will be blank. There is a little I here, so you can learn more about custom instructions and how they're used to provide better responses to you. You could change these every time you interact with chat GPT if you want to. So what I've told it is who I am. I have a specialty, specialty in linguistics and tech writing. I want to teach. Okay. It tells it what I teach. I research software tools and techniques. Um, blah, 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 blah. How would you like GPT to respond to you? So I say, call me Dr. Kim. So that's how it knows who I am. You can, you can have it call you, uh, Princess, uh, Fernanda. I don't know. You can have it call you anything you want. I, I more importantly, probably, um, it should provide lengthy responses in a business like tone. So I don't mind the lengthy responses because I can skim through them. What I don't want is for chat GPT to give me a really short response that then I have to follow up and ask for more information. But it, notice there are some thought starters here. So how formal or casual should chat GPT be? How long or short should the responses be? Um, should it have opinions on topics? Should it remain neutral? Um, and then you enable it, right? So I encourage you to do this and to play with it a little bit. There are so many things you can do with this. One of the things, if you're super interested in this, I encourage you to uh, use Platform, uh, which is the developer site. And in fact, a little later uh, in the course, I'll show you an example of how this, uh, this platform or playground can be used to tweak uh, tone and style. But for now, that's enough to get you started. Once you get started, it's hard to stop, though. I'll warn you. All right. Talk to you soon.